Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with the Bipcot NoGov Human License Wristband. This wristband has a NoGov patented NoGov hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. It doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. And by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Little Birds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this can be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal actions from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at lulberts.com. That's our word, Goyim. Brought to you by Bipcot Yabakas and Bean Phone Seamus something. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a terrible Jew. And I have another really happy merchant with me. Uh, Saul Seamus, is that your name? Yeah, that's my name. That's okay. my name. Maybe we should explain why we're doing this. Uh, do you want to uh, explain why? I think you saw why. You know why. Yes. Yes, I do. So, in an interesting turn of events, usually Jim has me on so that I can bash the left. And that's usually what I do, but somehow we got into a conversation on the alt-right, and that was our worst mistake because, unfortunately, a number of members from the alt-right got a hold of our podcast. Oh, no, it was just one. It was just cover. one guy. But he kept perpetuating the video in <laughs> the crazy land. Um, just him alone. But... The view count just jumped over to a thousand and almost a thousand, and this is on the YouTube. I don't expect a lot of views on the YouTube. I expect a lot of hits from the podcast, which is which is the case. Uh, the YouTube views probably don't even really break a hundred. It's only for the very small group of people who don't like having a po- RSS feed. But because he was on mm-hmm. there commenting, it got a lot of like viewership, and I don't know how that happened. Well, yeah, the algorithms. But go ahead. Yeah, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt. But it was just one person. <laughs> Well, they, they, they outed the operation. I yeah. mean, they, they exposed us. And they, they said um, it was actually very interesting because uh, initially, yeah, usually we just bash the left, but we got into the alt-right. And then someone commented saying, you should be called the Lulbergs. And I could not stop laughing. I was like, that's very well played, sir. Very well played. And so, yeah, I'm embracing it. We, we You know what, Jim? The, the, as soon as people started commenting that we were like secretly part of a jewish conspiracy i was like shut it down shut it down they know the people I was know but then i decided it's it's a good idea to just embrace it right just embrace our irish jewish heritage <laughs> both, irish. Of our, yeah, both of us are irish but okay yes. um yeah so yeah very we're, interesting we're, we're i guess we we're, were accused of judaism yeah, yeah so we're crypto jews I mean, everyone knows I'm a crypto conservative. That's fine. You know, everyone knows that I'm actually just trying to lure people into libertarianism because I'm a feudalist and I want them living on my plantation. Uh, well, you so do work for Austin the... Peterson to an extent, don't you? I do. Okay. All right. I, wor- I do work with. <laughs> I do work with Austin. Actually, I work with Austin Peterson. Um, his website, Libertarian Republic, promotes some of my work. Um, but I actually work mostly with other people on the website. Obviously, Austin's busy running for president. You know, no big deal. Um, and. I'm just making my cartoon. Hey, you know what though? Let me let tell me just you let me just say that let I in no way something. endorse Austin Peterson. You're free to do whatever you want, <laughs> but I, I, don't. I know you I don't. Have, Jim. I have some oh, personal I beef know with him. you don't. I know you don't endorse Austin. <laughs> but here's the thing. Let me tell you something. Not only has Austin been, I get like I get that he's a volatile figure, but I think when you deal with him on a one-on-one basis, especially, like, he's been nothing but cool to me. Like I've not had an issue with the guy. Um. On the other hand, too, here's here's a neat little fact. When you're uh, a libertarian welfare queen like I am, and <laughs> you need to apply for jobs in the, the libertarian field, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Having a libertarian presidential candidate's name in your references is pretty awesome. I'm 
I'm not gonna lie. I, I hit him up. I was like, hey, I'm applying for this thing. Can I use you as an in like a reference? He's like, absolutely. Like he was so cool about it. So thank you, Austin. You're the man. I don't care what Jim says. I don't care how Jim's gonna try to brainwash me into hating you. We know Jim hates liberty. He's already been called out in the comment section of the last podcast for being part of the Jewish conspiracy. It was a podcast so, before, quite frankly, not, not the last one. But go ahead. This is oh, all okay. true. This is all true. I know you're good with numbers, Jim. Um, I don't quite remember it being that far into the past, but the the bottom line here is that yes, I am working with him actually. That that was a very that. That was a very complicated way of saying, yes, I work with Austin Peterson. Mm -hmm. I don't. And I have not had it. <laughs> That's fine. I know. Yeah, and I, I'm going to hang out with Jim the fiends and not. the LRN people. Is, is, you know, for, for a lot of their faults, they're great. <laughs> I don't ever have like to worry them. about them like going, think, oh, I almost beat him up at International Students for Liberty Conference. I don't have to deal with any of that crap. Um, <laughs> you didn't. Did, I, I want to hear this story. Did, oh, you didn't hear I about know. this. First, okay. let me say. Was this when he commented? Was this the? Didn't you say he internet tough guy you or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Like uh... So here's what happened. Okay. So I had a. I still have a game that I sell. I only have the third volume uh, of Libertarians Against Humanity, which is a Cards Against Humanity expansion. Yes, yeah. Making I'm aware fun of, of that, libertarians. Actually. It's very it, just like this show is. Like I. I love kind of like libertarian self deprecating humor. It's just fun. Um, so oh, totally, totally. So I, I, one of my one of my upcoming videos. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but one of my upcoming sorry, videos sorry is exactly that. But keep going. <laughs> I'm um, sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry to interrupt. So, so I had the game, and then there was a card in there about Austin Peterson that said a typical. What is it? A typical Austin, a typical edgy Austin. No, excuse me, an edgy Austin Peterson comment that's really just a typical neocon position, and it was in there, and everyone thought it was kind of funny. But someone had posted a picture of that card to Austin Peterson shortly after the International Students for Liberty Conference in Washington, D.C. And he said that, oh, yeah, I know. I heard about this card. I, I tried to confront the, the, the creator who was there at International Students for Liberty Conference. And, you know, he ran away like a bitch and ha, 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 I'm a tough guy. And I posted well, on there. And I was like, oh, really? I was like, funny. I don't ever re recall in my entire life being in Washington, D.C., or International Students for Liberty Conference. But I, I've never been to Washington, D.C., let alone International Students for Liberty Conference. And then it went straight into, well, you know, Jim's fat. You know, look, look, look I would have noticed his, his fat jaws and fat face to, uh, bouncing around. And it's like, <laughs> really? That's what we're going with? Um, Jim, Jim, don't, please don't get into a fist fight with the president. <laughs> please don't. <laughs> Please so I was like, are you kidding me? And everyone was just kind of like, that's that's pretty sad. And even for Austin Peterson, who has a lot of you know people who really like him and will defend him to the death, because that's what happens with libertarianism, no matter who you are. There's always going to be some people mm -hmm. going like, ooh, sick burn, you're fat. There was no one that did that. <laughs> no one that did that. Everyone was kind of like, that's kind of low. <laughs> that was kind of low. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, sir. I am... What? I'm looking. All right. I was just scrolling through something on my newsfeed and I, I just noticed somebody liked their own comment on my status, but uh, I digress. Uh, I'll get off that. That's topic. actually worse my than internet is, tough guying me on the internet. It's <laughs> liking your own comments. Way, way worse. Way worse. All right. Say what you want about Austin Peterson. He's never liked his own comment on anything, Jim. So I don't yeah, think. I, I will give him that. You, I like Austin. No. All right. I like Austin. I like. Michael, I like I like the fiends. I, like I don't think that there's nobody who I don't get along with in the movement. Like I don't. And again, that's not because I'm not really a big name at this point. But there's nobody who I've dealt with who I haven't gotten along with. So I get that there's a lot of infighting, but I've never been a part of that. Like I'm, I'm pretty much cool with anyone except for Stefan who blocked me. <laughs> I don't have a problem with him. He doesn't like me, and I don't blame him for it. Like I totally get why he blocked me. I totally don't blame him for it. But yeah, besides that, I don't actually have any problems with people in the movement. So I know there's like infighting and like libertarian drama, but <laughs> I just, I never really felt a need to involve myself ever. I even, I was on a podcast with someone a while ago who was talking about how like people blocked him on Facebook. And even then I was like, probably the most volatile figure there is. And I, yeah. I mean, I don't even really have, I don't agree with him on everything, but I don't even have, like have a problem with him. I don't like, you know, there's no one in the movement. Where I'm like, I hate that guy. He's the worst. By the uh, way, that's a I cuss word. I actually have to bleep that out. The the c word. I can't. Hate? No, the c word. Yeah. Hey, no, that's that's a forbidden you word. You bleep here. that out. <laughs> yes, that's the only word I bleeped. I had Steve Miller Miller. You, 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 you I had. I'm not kidding. I had Steve Miller Miller say drop the n bomb. Hello? Whoa. Do you Whoa. You must have dropped out. But I had Steve uh, Steve Miller Miller. Yeah, I dropped drop out for the, a second. Yeah, drop the f bomb. And I did, was like, man, eh, that's fine. It, you, 
whatever. <laughs> but I, I said I there was a I little bit of context the name, I mentioned there, yeah. the name Chris. Yeah, I, 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 I mentioned no. the name. He who cannot be named. That's who what we call him here. <laughs> what really? What so what? I get that he's a volatile figure as well. I'm curious. Have you? Is this like a, an interaction you had with him? I remember a while ago, Michael commented, on, "No, I'm not doing this. I'm not getting involved in libertarian drama. No. I just said <laughs> no, 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 no. What it, am I doing? No, no, no. We need to move on. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> we just don't talk about him anymore. That's just all. <laughs> okay, we just, that's we're not going to give that's him any fair. more press. That's that's why. Uh, I'm perfectly happy with someone like Molyneux Jim. being more of a face of libertarianism than that guy way way more comfortable with that as much as i grit my teeth at that anyways libertarian well, side of, you wanted to talk about trigley puff or didn't you <laughs> Who i didn't want to talk you about? wanted to force me to i talk wanted about you to i wanted to force to be you to honest, talk about trigley puff <laughs> i feel bad for her i'll be uh, honest she is so she let me tell you something jim i don't what she did i know you don't because you don't have a heart jim all right so trigley puff is it just the <laughs> Philosophically, like when I look at everything she stands for, I want to be like, ah, you're the worst. But <laughs> when I think about it, she's just, I just feel bad for her, man. And hold on, hold on. By the way, whenever you say you feel bad for something in this you world of agree. trigger warnings and yeah. political, no, no, no. I just want to be clear. In this world of trigger warnings and political correctness, when you say you feel bad for somebody, that's like the highest honor. Like people love being pitied now. I don't mm -hmm. view being pitied as a good thing. It's awful to be in a position where someone can pity you. I'm not like, I feel so bad for her, and she's such a brave woman warrior. No, I'm like, I just feel bad for this person. Because clearly there's some emotional damage there that they were that passionately angry about censoring someone else's speech. There's something wrong with them. And now her face is all over the internet, and she's going to be shamed for the rest of her life, dude. She's a meme. And she was put in I that position. I don't know for the rest of her life. It's also her fault as well. Yeah. And I'm not, all right, well, maybe I'm exaggerating, but for a good while, that's something that people are going to find whenever they look up her name. And at the end of the day, a lot of that is her fault. When I say I pity her, I'm not trying to take any moral responsibility off of her either. I would feel mm -hmm. bad for anyone. It's, again, probably completely her fault. Obviously not her fault somebody filmed her and put it online, but hey, if you're going to act like a complete jerk in public, you should expect that. They're using their free speech to shame you, just like you were trying to use your free speech to shame somebody else and shut down their discussion and call them all sorts of mean liberal names that you had in your back pocket Racist. in case you were in a situation where someone Misogynist. was saying something you don't Sexist. like. Yeah. Exactly. So as badly as I want to go off on Trigley Pop, it's like I... And I think I've put this in as much context as I possibly can about how I feel about pity and these types of things. I just feel bad for her, dude. Like, I really have nothing but pity for her on every single level. When I think about who she is as a human being, or at least the image of who she is as a human being as it has been conveyed to me from the small bits of information I've gotten from her or about her, I just feel bad for her on every level. I don't. <laughs> and I got, I don't mean, but see, here, here's why. Here's why. Because, she, yeah, she Maybe was, I'm just too soft. Yeah, you're just a little bit too soft. I mean, like, you're you're a little bit more upset because they're more attacking the way she looks rather than her problems or what she was doing. Right? That's it's most a little bit of both. It's yeah, little, no, people are kind of more focusing on the fact like, that she looks like uh, Kirby. <laughs> than, which is what they want. Yeah. Which is what they want. You know what I mean? She wants someone to say it in a weird twist. They like she wants people to make it about that so that she doesn't have to argue with them because yeah. then she can say, "Oh well, you're not you're not body positive, so you gotta keep your hate speech off my campus." Like it's that kind of thing. That was a good impression, by the way. <laughs> but, the, yeah, but, so we should explain what she is because a lot of people are like, "What the heck is?" Yeah, there there was she, a, these, these were her words. Yeah, there was a there was these, a, what, what, an she, event with Stephen Crowder, uh, Milo, Myla, blah blah blah, Christina Hoff Summers, and Christina Hoff Summers, and they were doing like yes. Stephen Crowder was doing stand up. Uh, she, she was doing like a speech about feminism, and he was you know being Milo. Uh, <laughs> that's all he needed to be. He's right? just being Milo. He went. He his opening speech. He literally went up there and said, "Miss darling, feminism is cancer." And then he sat down. Yeah, <laughs> like, that, that's, that's all he needs. He, that to was say. his opening speech. And Christine was like, "No, Milo, I'm going to correct what he what he meant to say is feminists can behave unreasonably." And he's like, "No, feminism's cancer, darling. Like he just <laughs> he doesn't care. He's he's there to provoke." He's there to provoke, and he's winning because they're so – they just to, they lack self-awareness on every level it's possible. Yeah. Someone came there to piss them off and get them to act as obnoxiously as possible, so naturally they, they acted as obnoxiously as they possibly could. Yeah. 
But have you seen her Cupid profile, Trigglypuff, who showed up at the event? Like she is she's an a anarcho huge communist, woman. dude. Yeah, she's a huge. She's huge an woman. anarcho communist. And I she saw was that. flailing was around, like, yes. and then it just everybody started calling her Trigglypuff because she was so triggered, and she looks like a big puffball. Um, but she, yeah, right, she's a again, this is why body pod. But I'm just that's probably going to be the where well, I'm going to stop it there. Except for I'm going to explain. I'm that shocked on her, that she's body positive. Yeah, you know you should. It, <laughs> Why is it always people who are body positive are usually positive in in, in the realm of like where where the acceptable weight level should be? They're always in the hey, plus. Hold on, hold but, on. Listen, listen but, to me, Jim. You you are just you and are I'm just fat, knocking I'm Austin fat. Peterson, and you were just knocking Austin Peterson for insulting your weight. You you're the real body positive person here, Jim. You're gonna you called Austin Peterson out for fat shaming no, no, no. right now. But see, I also and have. I, hold to, on. Because I also have arguments, too. I was just making an, an observation for people who don't understand. Trigglypuff had arguments, too, Jim. Trigglypuff had arguments, too. Get your hate speech off my campus. Yeah, everything Get was hate speech. speech off that's not my an argument. So that's, such, we... that's such a good argument. Hold on to Jim. Tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me how that's not a good argument. No, it's not. You can't. Um, so she's she's a college student in West, West, Western Massachusetts studying radical leftist anti capitalist politics. That's what she's in college for. They let for. her. That's, they that's, let her into college. That's that's her. <laughs> that's her major is anarcho communism, feminism, and body positivity. And I'm super passionate about that. As you can tell, I am fat babe and proud of it. So I'm not. Oh, I'm not making fun of her because she's fat. Because you can't make fun of someone who's like, yeah, I, that's that's a good thing. I'm fat. That's a good thing. It's kind of like I, I'm an asshole. So when you call me an asshole, I'm gonna be like, yeah, that's that's right. And so, whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, you know, she said that's not gonna change. Um, if you don't like my fatness, I'm not the person for you. So don't bother wasting your time. Uh, I do a lot of activism oh, at my school, particularly around body positivity, positive, uh, positive, posi- damn it, positivity and dismantling the prison industrial complex. As a white cis person, I continued blah blah blah. So, um, and she's also in. Wait, hold on, no, 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 Jim, Jim, Jim. Sort of. You stopped at the best part. Oh. You stopped at the best part. As a, as a white cis person, she's about to acknowledge her privilege. I want to know oh, what she wow. has to say. I'm continuing to learn and try to stand in solidarity with people of color and trans people. Wow, dude. Well, she did keep the hate speech off the campus. And so. she's a complete Taurus, but she's not sure if she believes in astrology, but Taurus is a pretty accurate description of me. Because <laughs> every, everything is a perfect description of you in astrology. That's the whole point. Not <laughs> sure. Every- not sure if she believes in astrology. We're dealing with an intellectual heavyweight oh, wow. here, Jim. See? Not, now, you're, now you're attacking her weight. You better get off that moral oh superior. <laughs> you must get off I your moral. I didn't even mean it that way. Uh-huh. Is this how I? I didn't even mean. I wonder how many. You need to check your I wonder thin how many, privilege, pal. I have. I don't even have thin privilege because I'm not a good-looking thin. I'm like an unhealthy scrawny, Jim. Here's the problem. There, there are plus-size female models. How come there aren't minus-size male models? Like, why do I need muscles to be a model? I'm scraw- Jim. All right, when I tag someone's weight, it's like you can't say that because you're skinny. But like, I'm not the good kind of skinny, dude. I'm super scrawny and like awkwardly hairy. Like, that's what. Like I, those Moss. are the cars I was dealt. <laughs> I don't listen, Jim. I'm not gonna let you disparage women like the misogynist that you are. But all I'm trying to point out is I'm not like some. Like, I'm like a hunk, dude, and I'm going to, like, make fun of everyone who is beneath me. Like, that's not it at all. No, I'm just, no. I'm smarter I, I, than I everyone. love punching up. So I'm going to make fun of them for not being smarter than me, Jim. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm punching Jim. up. That's why I hate Austin Peterson, because, you know, he looks like a male model. <laughs> I got to punch up, right? He's very... <laughs> I gave him a few. He is, he's... Woo! I'll tell you where I'd swipe on Tinder. He's a handsome fella. No. Uh, gay for um, Peterson. You know what, Jim? Hashtag gay for Peterson. One of the best... One of my one of the best comments I ever got on one of my videos. I'm gonna black. I'm gonna brag right now, Jim. And I'm not sure if I'm bragging or if I could actually point this out as an example of harassment. But either way, I'm kind of virtue signaling on two fronts. Um, on one of the first YouTube videos where I showed my face, I got a comment that said, "Wow, you're not fat and ugly." And I was like, "Thank you." you like, that's all I wanted to hear. Yeah, and you don't have a neck beard like. Uh, I don't. Yeah, Bad Mouse Productions, right? Does Bad Mouse Productions have a neck beard? Yeah. Oh, and it's funny because he in, a, in his video to but Anarchy Ball. But he's an Ancom. Yeah, in his video to a- Anarchy Ball, he was like accusing him of being a neck beard while he was stroking his neck beard. 
<laughs> I actually read uh, something, I believe it was in Everyday Feminism, about why we shouldn't use the phrase neckbeard because it makes men who aren't neckbearded and are attractive feel like it's okay when they're misogynists because they're not fat <laughs> neckbeards. So. Or when women have neckbeards. That's sexist. Too. Yeah, what if a woman... That's, that's a good point. What, what if a the, woman has a neckbeard? What beard? about the bearded How do you women? Know they had... Bearded women <laughs> matter. <laughs> right. Dude, I hate that they... I hate that they... I hate that... These crazy men's rights activists want to turn having a beard into a gendered issue. <laughs> Women can have beards, too. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing, Jim. Here, here's what I want to be clear about. Back to Trigglypuff. I just, I gotta say something. <laughs> I've made it clear. I don't, I don't view pity as a good thing. I don't try to make people feel bad for me. I think it's pathetic to do that. I feel I do feel bad for her. I don't mean that in a good way. I don't mean that in a bad way. I but I do pity her, and I mean that. So that's why I feel bad. Like I'm oh, oh poor like, where did it go wrong? Pity is not a virtue. Who though. sold you this? Exactly, pity's not a virtue, that, and that's my point. Being offended is not a virtue. So that's why I'm careful to say I feel bad for her because I think a lot of people will fairly misconstrue that as me saying I take her side. Saying you feel bad for someone doesn't mean you take their side, but oftentimes in our modern dialogue, that's how it's presented. Because they try to get you to sympathize with anyone they want you to disagree with, despite the low quality of their arguments. It's a it's a bludgeon. So it's like at the end of the day, being exactly. offended is a bludgeon. If you're offended and you just walk away being offended, that's one thing. But for you to say Dude, like you, I'm offended, that's you trying to say, hey, my feelings matter on this issue, and you, and I don't like it, and you need to respect the fact that I'm uh, that I'm offended. If you're truly offended is, yeah. and you're you're just offended and nothing more, then you just walk away offended. You don't you don't announce it because now you're trying to use that as a bludgeon. I mean, you could truly be offended and announce that you're offended, but the only reason why you're doing that is because you're using that as a as a bludgeon. It's a pl it's like, dude, yeah. being a being offended isn't a virtue. They talk yeah. it like like it's like the best thing you can be. Like, yeah, you think you're great because you you have a master's degree. Well, guess what? I'm offended, and I have a master's degree in in uh what was her major? Uh, body positivity, anarcho communism. <laughs> what like? <laughs> Are there really classes for this at UMass? I need to know. Uh, I would like to take Jim, one of these classes. This... Just just sit in on one one lecture to see what this is like. Do you think? Do you think she's she's gonna earn less than a man when she graduates? Yes. Do you think there's gonna be a wage gap for her? Yes. That's so wrong. That's so wrong. Well, Why? considering her major, That's... anybody, male or female, should be paid less. Period. But Jim, that's it's discrimination because you know that's that's. That is a major only POCs, women, and other minorities will go into. Isn't it crazy how they call women minorities now? Like, you can't be a minority when you're half the population. Yeah. Like, that's, not, that's not how it works. You're, <laughs> that's like, do you not know what minority means? It means there are less of you. Yeah, that's There that's literally the are not, like, th th that's, ugh, I'm so mad right now, Jim. So mad. Speaking of minorities, <clears throat> We should talk about the Libertarian Party. <laughs> That's true. Dude, we're yeah. minorities. I'm a minority. Yeah. What? Well, not... Probably not anymore. Um, so there's yeah. a there's an article on Red State titled, By GOP. Because last... We did a show the other day. And this is not going to be released till tomorrow. So you, we're actually recording the night before. And then I'm going to upload this tomorrow. So you're hearing this the day before. But true, Cruz yesterday dropped out of the race after we were finished recording... Uh, the one with Steve Miller Miller. And, yeah, Cruz dropped out of the race, and then Kasich dropped out, what, this morning, right? I believe, yeah. So he dropped believe, out this wait, morning. Wait, Kasich dropped out? Kasich Why dropped drop out. out. Why? You could have had it. <laughs> Be because you know how many delegates were left? Because no one wants to. Because no one wants to vote for the Motel Six guy. Every Kasich, time I Kasich. every time I hear this guy talk, I'm just waiting to hear that like that. And you know, he's like, "I'll we'll leave the light on for you." Every time. Oh, well, my well, father was a mailman, and every time we used to leave anywhere, because being the backbone of American society that he is, you know, we, we'd drop by the Motel 6. They always leave the light on for us. Every time. Every time I hear him talk, I just hear that little Motel 6 violin and guitar playing. Never, anyways. It's really offensive. So That's he, very classist. So he but dropped out, going. and there was a Red State article that came out, I guess, because. Uh, and then there was also a Reason article, too. The reason article pointed out, like immediately after Cruz dropped out, there was a an influx in searches for the li libertarian and libertarian party in the Google. What is it? The Google uh, 
trends. So there was a, a spike in interest in, in libertarianism. And then now Red State is reporting that the Libertarian Party registration double in mass after uh, after a mass exodus after Trump win uh, in Indiana. Yes. And there's a little Dumbo that looks like a Republican crying. <laughs> there's a MAGA hat on the floor, of course. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we're uh, I guess this is going to be an interesting turn of events. Uh, I'm not sure Austin Peterson's going to get the nomination. Johnson's pretty much a shoe in. But either way, uh, it would be interesting to see because one of them is going to end up on the debates. It looks like that. It really does. Uh, That's going to be awesome. Yeah, I'm so pumped for that. I think there was a, a poll done even before Trump was uh, was um, you know when there was still a lot of debate whether or not he was going to be in, saying that if he was a nominee, who would you vote for him or or the Libertarian Party? I think they actually named Johnson or uh, Hillary Clinton, and H- Johnson got 11 percent of that at that poll. If that persists, if and I think the only two that can really do it, McCaffrey, people would be like, oh, no, 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 this guy's a criminal, right? He, even though he's probably not. Uh, they're going to look at him as a crazy guy because that's his... Alleged. Alleged, yeah. It's all alleged. I don't buy it um, that he did anything wrong. But that's the perception that he has. I think that Johnson or, or Peterson probably have a little bit more of a cleaner image <laughs> that would work, that would get 11% or more, enough to get on the debates. And that would be interesting. Now, I'm not interested in having a libertarian president. You know, I'd rather... I'd rather I'm just not interested in having a president, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, on top of that. <laughs> uh, but it would be interesting to see like the mainstream media talking about the word libertarianism not in a pejorative and that's what one thing that ron paul did well and even rand paul is that people talk about libertarianism in the in the political sphere in in the mainstream media not as a pejorative it used to be like an insult like oh he's just some libertarian <laughs> friend. yeah and well that's how it still is at art school jim so so that's one good thing that comes out of it. But I'm sure you probably have other reasons being a libertarian infighting drama whore, right? <laughs> and that's totally me, dude. I'm always infighting. I'm like, who can I make a fight with today? I have like a little uh, globe. If you think that like, I'm bad with a- that, you should go to an LP meeting. <laughs> dude, <laughs> really let me start. tell you something, Jim. I have like, I have like, a, little, I have like a little globe. And on it, it's got pictures of like every notable libertarian. And I have like a dart and I spin the globe and I, I, I shoot it. I'm like, ah. It, it it landed on Michael again, like again, like the, it's usually you. It's either you or Michael. It's always it's like the fiends or it's someone from the Lulbirds. That's why <laughs> that's why I almost got into that debate about Star Wars, which we never did. We'll get to that because there's more. Dr- I we said that we weren't going to talk about it until another Star Wars movie came out. And it didn't even have to come out before more drama ensued with that. And I, I'm going to have save that with Matt. If you want to come in on, come on with Matt and I'll I'm, come, dude. I'll throw down. Yeah, dude, I'll throw, throw down. down with Matt on Star <laughs> Star Wars. He thinks Star Wars is better than Star Trek. <laughs> what? Are you kidding? Hey, I'll destroy him. No. What? You know why? Because you're a white oh, male. Because oh, oh, oh. you're a fucking white male. Yeah, I am a white male. I am a white male. <laughs> and I win the a white male. <laughs> yeah. You're, All right, but you're had fucking you a white this? male. <laughs> hold on, hold on. But but had you just had you considered this? Let me be very clear on this. Whiteness let me be clear. is an I. Let me be clear. Uh, let me be clear. Uh, America, uh, whiteness. Uh, you didn't build that. Whiteness <laughs> is an ideology, Jim. I was watching a video. I was watching a video from BuzzFeed called "How Minorities React to the Word White," and they had all these really brave people on there. Brave. Who, and they so were all minorities, brave. and they're all very. So brave. And they asked them, what is whiteness? And this one woman was like, well, whiteness is a set of ideas. It's like a set of <laughs> ideas. I was like, that's so true, man. It's so true. Because I used to think that like, hmm, maybe like they just try to invalidate people's political beliefs by pointing out their skin color. But then I really thought about it. And I was like, no, that skin color itself is an idea. So if a black person espouses political views I traditionally associate with white people and I can't insult him for being the wrong race, I can just say that his views are part of the ideology that that race composes, Jim. So actually, I'm not a white male. Because my opinions are are right and therefore not white. This is all hate so, speech. This is hate speech. I'm gonna start Jim, failing. not a word of it. I will not hear it. Now, here's something. You know what? You you go on. You go on with your little shtick, Jim. 
You tell the audience what you want to tell them, and then I'm going to talk about white privilege, because I was thinking about something today, and I have a little rant about white privilege that I want to go off on. I'm going to, I'm going to infuse your headphones with some truth, dog. Okay. Infuse. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm, are you I'm, ready? Yes. I'm grabbing my ankles. <laughs> so, do you remember? Do you remember back in grade school? I'm talking K through 12, all right? When you would get really good grades and the other kids in the class would be like, it's because you're the favorite. You're the favorite student. No. Do you remember that, Jim? No. Me neither. Me neither, because I got <laughs> terrible grades, Jim. I was awful in school. I was the, literally the worst student, okay? But, but I realized that with few exceptions, when I got bad grades, guess whose fault it was? Oh, it was totally yours. Mine. Yeah. There were one there were one or two teachers throughout school who maybe like really didn't like me. And I'll stand by that. Just one or two. For the most part, you were they were impartial. Clown, right? I Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So for the most part, my bad grades were my fault. And I grew out of that immature attitude very quickly. Because if you're in a position where you consistently get bad grades from different teachers, and then the kid who's always doing his homework gets good grades, it kind of gets harder and harder to uphold this narrative that there's a conspiracy against you. Yeah. Now, let me be clear. No, what, let, what am I about to say clear. next? Let me, be, let me clear. be clear. It's a situation where the, the kid getting the Fs is like, you are getting A's because you're the teacher's pet, and you're the teacher's favorite, and the teacher loves you the most. This kid's going home after, after, after he goes to Hebrew school and studying his butt off, right, to get his A's. And Oy, I'm man. not making this out to be a racial thing. I'm not making this out to be a racial thing. Because in every class, you have kids of whatever race who are just, they're just smarter than you, or they are more hardworking than you, and they get better grades. And look. I'm not saying teachers never, ever play favorites. It totally happens. It totally happens. But for the most part, if you're getting really, really bad grades consistently, like that is your fault. Now, how do I view this as white privilege? White privilege is like whenever you succeed. Like your society's favorite. <laughs> Society just likes you more. You're your favorite. You'll have a favorite. That's like, you're right. In some situations, I do. Because in some situations, teachers play favorites. In some situations, society plays favorites. But for the most part, if I'm consistently doing really, really, really well, and it's I'm not like a trust fund baby, and you're consistently not doing very well, it's not because somebody's playing favorites. Like, sometimes I'm actually just working harder than you. And also, let me be clear on this. How much would it clear. suck if people... Oh, let me be clear. How much would it suck? Because part of the problem with this analogy that I'm making is... It's not necessarily a great one because it assumes that white people are succeeding all the time and minorities who talk about privilege are never succeeding. But imagine this, Jim. Imagine you're in a class and you get a paper with a C on it and the kid next to you gets an A and they still turn to you and say that you're the favorite. Like, you're your favorite. <laughs> the teacher likes you more. Dude, I got a C and you got an A. You're more successful. Just because you're not successful doesn't mean the institutions of power that keep me down and put you up don't exist. You should have gotten a D. I should have gotten more than an A. Like, it's... Yeah, did, you, you did can't... You, did like you, once the, when you were grading the, 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 the paper, did you also consider the fact that you have to add 10 points or 10 percentage points because they're trans, because they're a different race? <laughs> uh, forgot. Yeah, yeah if, you know, if they're a woman. Affirmative action. Yeah, if you do all that stuff, then you boost it up, and then... And then you also get donked for being a white cisgendered male. You get all three of those. Also, yeah. here's, and here's, here's, here's what I want to make clear, just so it's very well understood that everyone listening to this, that I'm not going off this rant because I never think that, that you know, I, like, I'm not going to be a social justice warrior white person who's going to be like, oh, my life's so hard. Like, that's not what I'm trying to say. But what I am trying to say is the worst thing you can do for a kid that's failing one of their first classes is like whisper in their ear like, hey. You're only failing because the teacher doesn't like you. And no matter what you do, you're still going to fail. Okay, then that kid's going to fail the rest of his life, dude. Even if some of the teachers don't like him, don't tell him that. Just tell him to do his homework. What? Are you kidding me? Tell him to study, and he'll get good grades. But that's how 
I view a lot a lot of the privilege You're stuff, especially like McDonald's the male privilege. For the rest of your life, I'll see you at McDonald's. I had a, I had a teacher tell me that once, and I'm like, <laughs> that didn't work out. I've never worked fast food. <laughs> Ever. I'm a, actually, I'll be a libertarian, <laughs> so joke's on you. Yeah, I, I had I had one minimum wage job, and it was very short-lived, and that was it. Yeah. What was it? It was making donuts for, for a, a grocery store when, when, it was, when I went to Kansas, because I had some problems with cause I, cause I was in the carpet industry, and I was like almost in a position to hurt my back. So I was like, I'm going to get into anything. Just get a quick part-time job until I can get through uh, uh, my CNA class, and then I went straight on to that, so... Yeah, and that was that yeah. was my so my, anyway. my my quick dabble into yeah. wage work, making donuts. But I was the best damn donut maker ever, and it was a great reference that I put put it on there because now they're like, oh yeah, he was a wonderful worker. I don't use it anymore, Jim. But, if yeah, if you were the best donut maker, I was if you the, were the best. best donut maker. They would have paid more than minimum wage, Jim. That's you know what that is. If they pay you less than that, they go to jail, Jim. If they pay you less than that, they go to jail. They w- <laughs> the only reason they didn't pay you less than that is because they didn't want to be rooming with Bubba, all right? It was either room I with pop- Bubba or pay Jim a little more, and they're like, well, maybe we'll pay Jim a little more. Well, my they- job was specifically a loss leader. Like, the whole point of that bakery, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of the stuff that goes on in a supermarket bakery is all loss leader. It's all just bring people in because they're going to want one of the few things, but then they're also going to go buy the stuff that makes the money, like Oreos and beef. Uh, but, you know, my donuts... They actually probably lose money on the whole. I think the whole bakery department was actually a giant loss leader, except for bread. Wow. Except for prepackaged, precooked bread. But that was it. Anyways, go ahead. Sorry, well, to, sorry to interrupt. Okay. But, well, so, yeah. so, no, so, so you interrupted me, huh? Part of my whole analogy work? that I'm trying to make about teachers playing favorites is, again, to say, like, yeah, you do have certain situations where, like, being white or being male can definitely help you. But if you're going to say that entirely, like, the entirety of society is some conspiracy to keep like white men up and put everyone else down why are asians doing so well first of all what why jim all right is my first well, question that, that's because they're good question. at math and now you're just being racist by pointing out they're good at math no i don't know that no i think they're the worst <laughs> at math jim no i don't know i don't know why it is i'm not saying it's a math thing but my, my whole point is like yeah. well have you yeah. checked out the correlation could- between iq and race yeah <laughs> That reads me got to keep my, out all the black people. <laughs> all I'm going to do is dig myself. All, here's the thing, Jim. I just realized I'm placing in all these caveats here to help people understand that, like, I'm not completely off the deep end on all of this. But <laughs> if someone's listening to this, if someone's listening to this and they were offended by any of what I just said moments ago, Good. nothing I say is going to change their mind. Nope. No amount of logic. I, no, no matter how much I explain that I do believe there is to some extent privilege being experienced by myself or that I don't think one race is better than the other, blah, blah, blah. They're still going to be like, you're racist. You're yeah. racist. You're the teacher's favorite and you're denying it. That's, um, <laughs> that's how my life feels. And so that's, that's basically it, man. And look, look, Jim, look, I go to I'm the looking. most diverse school. I go to the most diverse school ever, fam. <laughs> listen listen to this Th- chill out here dog i am like the o- i'm like the only white male on campus i and that's that's not that's it that's an exaggeration but this school there's seven girls say, for every three guys oh yeah yeah women are women are taking so, over college for sure especially <laughs> yeah. especially art school jim <laughs> i am at art school you think okay. there's a lot of guys here you think there's a lot of math people at art school jim there are not. I will, I'll spoil it for you. There's not many. But they didn't know what you know women what, you know do. What the, you, you know what the largest religious congregation at art school is, Jim? Atheism. Spirit, spiritual but not, not religious, Jim. <laughs> That's the number one religion here is spiritual but not religious. That's the worst. I'm telling you this. That's worse. Than, this is what art school is. That's worse than Scientology. Did, <laughs> that's way, way worse than Scientology, Jim. My point here is that I go to school that's extremely diverse. And I, I get along with everyone, and everyone is super cool, and it's crazy because even at one of the most liberal places you could possibly be in art school, which is extremely diverse, when you crack open someone's shell and you speak to them in an environment where they're no longer required to virtue signal and let everyone else know how progressive they are, they'll start poking holes in the ideology, and they'll let you know, like, yeah, you know, I like don't think that there's this institution out there that's trying to oppress me. For not they don't believe in the Illuminati. Like you are shameless. Now maybe it's my. 
All right, Jim. Now maybe <laughs> maybe it's because they're on me, and by doing, I, I, and I assert my patriarchal dominance subconsciously by doing things like man spreading and interrupting them. So maybe because of that, they're afraid to espouse the the neo progressive ideology, and that's why they go back on social justice every single time they're alone with me. But yeah, when but you, crack I, people, I, I do that. Well, I only do that because because I'm part of the globalist elite. But go ahead. Yeah. Me too. Well, obviously, it's a facade, right? Like, we don't really believe in meritocracy. We just want people to believe that because we're trying to keep them down. And if mm -hmm. they work harder, they'll be putting more money in our pockets. Yeah. So we want them to think working harder gets them ahead, but yeah. it doesn't. Ugh. Exploitation. Here's an, ugh. And here's another thing, dude. The, the degree to which human beings in this nation have a total lack of understanding of economics. I had somebody tell me that, th th listen to this quote, Jim. Just listen to this quote. The economy punishes women for having babies. I want, I, want, I want you to think about that, Jim. The economy punishes people. That's not what, you don't know what any of those words mean if you say that. If you put those words together in that sentence in that order, you don't, don't know what they mean. An economy is a complex series of trade networks operating on a particular set of mathematical principles. It doesn't choose to punish somebody. Like, if you can't work because you have a baby, you're not going to get money. That's not punishment. Dude, as an animator, at one point, I got carpal tunnel and I wasn't able to make as much money. Is the economy discriminating against animators with RUIs? Is, no. Am I being punished for having a repeated use injury, Jim? But biology would probably no. be oppressing you. <laughs> biology how dare you oppressing get, me. Yeah, how dare you Jim. get carpal tunnel? But like, and they're like, well, but no, it's different because men and women can get carpal tunnel, but only women can get pregnant. I was like, first of all, check your privilege. Men can get pregnant if they're trans. But second of all, what do, that doesn't even matter. That doesn't even matter. So what if, if it's something that only happens to women or something that only happens to men? Like that, that's ridiculous. That doesn't mean anything. Like the economy, the, the mathematical laws that govern the economy don't cease to function because they're afraid you'll accuse them of sexual discrimination. Well, it's because they got kidney oh, well. stone privilege, right? I think that's, that's why the only reason why they're going true. after us because you know that we, you know, because <laughs> we have kidney stone privilege, right? They're just jealous because we can't, My they can't have kidney stones or something. Kidney stones are the worst. Yeah, they're they are Hitler. I've had one. Yeah. Yeah. I heard. You. I'm sorry. I love caffeine. Something it's crazy. Not change. You know what my mom is? You know what my mom told me? Check this out, dog. Check this out. I heard. I once heard from a woman. My mother's a nurse, worked in medicine, talked to many a woman with different medical conditions. I heard a story of a woman. She gave birth to a 10-pound child without an epidural. And at a different point, she passed the kidney stone. She said passing the kidney stone was harder. Yeah. So if you've passed the, if you've passed the kidney stone, anytime a woman's like... Did you know what women love to say about childbirth? You know what they love to say? It's like squeezing it's like out the, the, a, a baseball through your urethra. No, no. Oh, they, they do say that. They yeah. do say that. They do say that. But here's, 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 here's the, the first thing they say. You can't even imagine. That's their, you can't even imagine. Yeah. My imagination's pretty good, lady. I'm an artist, all right? <laughs> Sock it to me. <laughs> Let me... I can but no, don't keep me wrong. I, childbirth is probably super difficult. I'm not denying that. Like, dude, if you can give birth to, if you're creating life, like, it's not going to be easy. I mean, it's easy for me. Like, that's yeah. for men, it's like <laughs> yeah. fun. But yeah, for women, it's for women. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I understand that. That totally sucks. Like, I'm not going to say that biologically women have it easier than men. If, and that's, I think that's the root of the problem. And dealing the with pregnant areas women can in be, life, can be, uh, can be a burden as well. <laughs> who told you that? What? No, <laughs> me. dude, yeah. my sister was. Go ahead. Let me tell you, through all ni through all nine months of my sister's pregnancy, it was a joy. <laughs> Not once was she ever. You have to be upset. trolling me. <laughs> no, I, it was, Jim. It yeah, was my, I, I actually had, to be my honest, sister though, was no, living no. was living with us. I love my us. sister so much, but yeah, my sister was living with us when she was when she got pregnant. This was I wasn't even eighteen. So, anyways, uh, yeah, yeah, she was living with us. That was that was a nightmare. Um, see, see what my, what my brother in law was going through. That was a nightmare too. Uh, yeah. yeah, it depends though. My see, my sister's like literally the sweetest human being on the planet, and but like even when she's pregnant, obviously you're still gonna have like certain mood swings and stuff. But her, it was so sad. Like she just get really sad about like she didn't get angry that often. She just get really sad about stuff sometimes, and I would just feel so bad for her. I'm like no, Mary, no. Like, she got really sad that, like, the dog didn't love her anymore at one point. I was like, Mary, Toby loves you so much. Like, he loves you. He, 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 you're his favorite. He talks about you all the time. 
Like he, <laughs> he can't get you off his mind. <laughs> but she, that's the point. Well, I guess what I'm trying to get across is like, dude, I don't, I don't envy women at all. The, but most of the difficulties that they have, all this stuff about being a woman that I wouldn't want to deal with is way more to do with biology than society. Yeah. Yeah. Like, being a woman is a pay gap. I was like, no, that's that's you work less, you don't get paid as much. Yeah, that's I, not I need to get one of those but, shoe on head buttons where I slap it every time I hear the wood like, gap. Mo gap. <laughs> Jim, Jim check it. this out. So I posted I posted an article about how 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 silly that statistic is. I, it was actually Christina Hoff Summers' video, right? Good mm -hmm. old factual feminist, I tell you. And someone commented, she's you know pretty smart gal usually. I very much disagree with her on a number of issues. But she commented like, look, I understand where this is coming from, but please read this article. And this is one of the articles that found well, like lying about the weight gap for all these hold on. years. You might want to go back and repeat that because you kind of glitched out. Did I cut out? Yeah. You all right. So my friend posted this article in a thread that I started about how the wage gap was just nonsense. And I looked at the article. And is one thing I noticed this read equal pay day is that the feminist movement is working very hard to do damage control on the fact that they lied about that for so many years. Like, no, we weren't saying that women make less for the same work, despite the fact that we were chanting equal pay for equal work. What we were actually saying is women are brainwashed into choosing female careers which make less and that women aren't getting paid for maternity leave that's all we were trying to say despite the fact that we weren't saying that for the past 40 years or you know yeah and it's like oh well okay well that's interesting what's um, their solution to this all, their, their solution to that which it's, it's it's the dumbest thing i've ever heard is basically well women should just learn how to play with trucks and legos instead of barbie that'll dolls solve, and, and, that'll solve yeah. the wage gap. and it's like well, you it, that doesn't change anything because i i knew a couple kids you know we used to pick on them uh, you know, because they were they were playing with easy bake ovens or, ha or had baby dolls. It was because you picked on them, Jim. That's why the experiment wasn't successful. You picked on them. <laughs> it, it was all in good fun. Like you they were dork. still my friends, but we still kind of made fun of them. Uh, either way, my my mom totally bought me an oven. My mom totally bought me an oven. Yeah, I'm sorry, I like, but I I was the, the one thing that I w that I would want out of all the girls' toys. The only thing I really ever cared about was the easy bake oven because I was like, dude, I can make cookies that's, with a with a light bulb. That's my jam. That's my yeah. <laughs> Sign me up. Like I don't care if this is a woman toy or a girl toy. I I want this. Everything else was like no. There's utility here. Yeah, I wanted my titty ruckspin and I wanted my uh, my uh, uh, transformers and I wanted my my uh, Thundercats. Those those were my things. Oh, and Silverhawks were badass too. But anyways, dude. Yeah. Here's but, what else that, is nuts. So. Yeah. Oh no no. But here's what I'm saying. So here's what I want to get out there. The next time a feminist tries to tell you that this nuanced view of the wage gap that they appear to be taking now in order to do damage control was the view they had all along, just mm -hmm. point to two years ago when they tried passing the Equal Pay Act, which they claimed was going to close the wage gap if enacted, and the only thing the legislation said was that it should be illegal to pay women less for the same work. Yeah. If you weren't lying to people and telling them women were earning less for the same work, why would you say the solution would be to discriminate or to end discrimination against women in the workplace like that the whole point of legislation was uh it should be illegal uh to pay a woman uh 77 cents for something you would pay a man a dollar for and you're like yes we need to pass this how could you possibly be against this because women are earning less than men for the same work and now they're like oh we never said that really <laughs> then why did you try to pass a law this was two years ago how short do they think our memories i get that women are better at remembering things than men like, I get that women are better at remembering. I get that men, I get our memories suck. I get we're pretty dumb when it comes to that stuff. But they've really underestimated us. If they think we can't remember a year and a half ago when they were trying to pass the Equal Pay Act. Literally, I repeat myself, the point of that bill was to say it should be illegal to pay a woman less for the same work. Which, call me crazy for reading between the lines here, maybe these are mental gymnastics on my part, Jim, you let me know. But when you try to pass a law saying it should be illegal to pay women less for the same work, you're kind of implying that women make less for the same work. Right. But and this law already existed. Why they needed to repeat the law, it didn't make any sense. There was, there was a law. The yeah, they, they had a fair pay law. The Anti-Discrimination Act. Yeah, back back in, what, the 60s, 1964? And they had a big push. I mean, they, I remember they had Batwoman complaining to Batman that they were underpaying, him, or underpaying her uh, for the same work that Robin was doing. And, like, they had, a, they, had a, they had a big push for this. This is in the 60s. 
in the sixties. So like, they created well, this this new I law. Have to take care of they were basing basing this off this bogus seventy four percent precision, which which probably was true in the sixties. It's definitely not not true now. And then. But like the act, but anytime you try to pin them down, they'll point to this other study that that, that came out of the Barack, Barack Obama administration that basically said that like it was like it, after it was all said and done, it came down to like seven percent. Like there was a seven cent like difference, you know, which which correlated generous, more. Dude. No, but it would correlated more with the fact that there's a seven cents difference for people who don't negotiate pay versus people who do, and, and yeah. women don't generally negotiate pay they usually take whatever offers you know first at them which well they're intimidated because their boss is man spreading <laughs> <laughs> or something yeah anyway no, i get what you're saying dude no it's ridiculous um another like ridiculous argument i heard this is the most obscene mental gymnastics i've ever heard but one of the first things the article said was i'm sure you've seen uh, many of the quote debunkings they put debunkings in quotes so it's automatically invalid um of the wage gap <laughs> but you want one among these denials of discrimination is blaming Denialist. women for the wage gap they they said listen listen to how they characterized and by the way, you remember how you said that statistic from in the 60s or 70s, women probably did earn less? Dude, Thomas Sowell debunked the wage gap like back in 70-something. So even back then, okay. it was probably a bogus okay. stat. But that was but, the 70s. That was, bef- that was after the wage, my wage gap. <laughs> my wage gap. But here, here's the point. Um, I, I've seen Mad Men. I know, you, I, I know how women were treated in the 60s. I mean, because fiction is actual oh, life, I'm not right? Say- oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I and I'm not saying women were not ever treated poorly or anything along those yeah, lines. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, but they're they're lying about a lot of the stuff today. Yeah. And my point is, when you look at the wage gap, when you look at these statistics, when you look at the fact that they spent years telling us it was based on discrimination, um, and now they're pretending to to make these other claims. The way they characterized the debunking of the wage gap by discrimination, which of course is to say women are making different choices by them that are women are making different choices than men. What they say is, so you're blaming women for the wage gap. What? Are you Are you serious? That's the dumbest What? The, no, you, I mean, so I'm sorry. Like the, if if the, women could do a better job you know uh being a nanny to children, fine. That's that's great. That's not their fault. That's just what, that, what career they found they they they're best in, right? That's not nothing wrong with I'm, that. I'm not, I'm not, if it's a less paying job, I'm not even gonna, uh, And I'm not even gonna, go that far it's the, the problem is not only is it a less paying job but they go into career field they work less hours even before they have children they're less likely to work overtime than men are um they go into far less dangerous career fields way less likely to be killed doing their jobs so it's crazy to me that you would point out that men are jumping through all these hoops to earn what they earn and when women are making less and you try to claim it's the point like the result of discrimination you claim it's discrimination when it's not, and then someone points out that it obviously isn't discrimination, and your response is, oh, so you're blaming women for the discrimination? No, we're saying there isn't discrimination! This isn't that hard. <laughs> that would be like, there'd be like, there'd be like if, if Jim and I were outside, and we're like, I was like, Jim, look at Hold on, the this is very unbelievable. Me go this outside? Is, no, 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 no. You're, no, no, you're like, <laughs> Jim, I told you. I've told my fans I go outside sometimes so that I can litter. It's it's a fun <laughs> way to do. So let's say the Libertarian Party is paying you and I to go outside and litter, and for each uh, item that's non-biodegradable that we throw it on the lawn, we'll get fifty cents. Nice. And so Jim throws out. So of course both of us make well over a thousand dollars. This is why you work with Austin Peterson, right? Is <laughs> exactly this is, this is actually what we do at Libertarian Republic. Okay. Um. So. You make a thousand five hundred dollars, and I make one thousand dollars. And I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold the phone. I only made two thirds what him, Jesus, made. And they're like, well, uh, and you, I'm like, this is obviously unfair discrimination. And you respond to me by saying, well, I littered a lot more than you, so I should get more money. Yeah, because I'm fatter. I can eat me? more. Yeah, I, I can eat. You're more. believe more and litter. Yeah, I was like, all right, but hold on. This is also discrimination because the fact that you can eat more and litter more means I'm being discriminated against for being skinny. Like, that's the pregnancy <laughs> argument. That's how I hear it. Like, no, it's just who you are. It's your biology. And no one's discriminating against you. These are just natural market forces acting so that we're not allocating resources where they don't belong. Yep. Sorry. 
<laughs> I eat more. Hashtag sorry, not sorry, fam. Yeah. But, but, you shouldn't be sorry. But there's also there's also down downsides with me being fat, right? Yeah, I also can all these heart conditions and stuff. And this is where you interrupt me to say like you I, you checking my fat privilege. <laughs> Jim, actually, yeah. first of all, it's genetic. It's completely genetic. I, everyone's weight is genetic. Of course. Of course. So, <laughs> and and it has nothing to do with health. It was funny. I saw this. Um, I, yeah, I only lost thirty pounds on, on on this diet that I'm doing. I've only lost thirty pounds, but it's clearly genetic. Genetics it's is why I did the diet. Genetic. <laughs> well, according well according to Sam Harris, free will doesn't exist, so everything you do is the result of your genetics. <laughs> so technically, they could be right. Um, all of their all their choices are just genetic. Then really, their weight is totally genetic. But uh, my my point I was gonna make I, I was I saw this like fat po body positivity thing, and it was this whole list about like why you should embrace body positivity. And like, don't get me wrong. Here, and this is where I tend to disagree with being politically correct. Like, I would agree 100% that you shouldn't go out and, like, insult people's weight. One, we're 100% in agreement there. The idea that I should pat you on the back and tell you your weight is healthy, th no. Yeah. That's where I disagree. That's where I completely disagree. And so this whole post was like, reasons you should embrace body positivity. And, like, the list, the first thing on the list was weight in no way correlates with health. And then, like, halfway down the list, it's like, you don't have a moral obligation to be healthy and no one should judge you for being unhealthy. I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why are you bringing health into this? I thought weight had nothing to do with your health. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Am I wrong? Yeah, that, that's the only reason why I went after Trigley's weight was because she goes on to this body, bos, uh, positive body image type thing. And it's, it's, not, a, it's not good to, to encourage people to be that unhealthy. It really is not. And, way, and honestly, if it wasn't for people calling me fat, I you know I wouldn't be like on this path to lose weight, like, which I am right now. But oh yeah, yeah people, don't get me wrong. There there is some yeah, value people, to to ostracism. There is some value to it. Even oh, even no with doubt, that. dude. But just just basing everything that they do on that that's 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 another argument that that I don't agree with. Just oh, just insult Jim just because he's fat. You know, like I made a mistake, so I'm gonna yeah. make him. I'm gonna make him feel bad for pointing out this mistake by pointing out that he has, you know, jowls. Come on, man. Oh yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> and that, that that's totally uncool. Yeah. Well, no, that's how I feel. I think it's totally uncool to do that. But on the other hand, like, look, dude, dude, I get called out for being scrawny all the time. Like, people will grab me like, you need to eat more. You need to work out more. I mean, is it that's super racist. annoying? Yeah, that's totally and it's totally racist, and that's the point. <laughs> it's totally racist. No, dude, if if it, if it bothered me that bad. Instead of putting my time and energy into a body positivity movement, I would just work out. And I know working out works. You know why? Because my brother Patrick used to be even scrawnier than I am. And mm -hmm. he started working out like three years ago and he's ripped. Like he's ripped. He's big now because he started eating more and he started working out. So I know I could do it if I want. I'm more interested in drawing cartoons, Jim. And that's the opportunity cost that I have to pay. I know I can get girls with my wit and my charm, Jim. I don't need a good body. I'm Ugh. sorry, but Healthy why does sides. the one, the top 10% of the top 1% have 90% of all the sexy in this country? It's unfair. People that's should a point. That's a point. like fat and scrawny I people. Say. I, that's exactly how I feel. Like I said, if a girl can be a plus size model, why can't I be a minus size male model? It's just <laughs> why is Channing Tatum? Why is Channing Tatum's body hotter than mine? I don't. You know, you have tell you looked me, into but... his eyes? It was like the first time I heard the Beatles. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's gross. That's gross. It's racist. Oh come on! You, that movie was great. Uh, <laughs> that was a great movie. Yeah. That was what? Super bad? Yeah, super bad. <laughs> movie's very inappropriate, Jim. Um, Anyways, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, dude, no. Uh, all right, I'm going to be completely real here. I'm going to be completely real. I'm going to sound like such a jerk. I'm going to sound like talking right out my own butt. But I, I have a tendency to do that. Someone commented on one of my videos recently, like, do you know what you're talking about? Or are you just talking out your butt? I was like, both. Like, I, I, both. I know what I'm talking about. I also, I choose to forego repeating any of the information I've gathered over time and talk out my butt instead. So that's what I'm going to do here. Mm -hmm. But maybe this is due to the fact that I go to an art school where 7% or 70% of the people are women and half of the men are gay. There's just, there's not much competition in the heterosexual dating pool for men here. Yeah. All right. I should, I should, start, and I, I should come visit. You, Jim, you should come visit. You, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Ooh, they love libertarians here. Oh, I They'd bet. They'd be like, the Lulberts come out. There would be a protest for you, Jim. They would never <laughs> let you in. They would, but, um, so my point is, me, of course, I'm not like, dude, I'm not one of those guys who's like, oh man, I'm gonna go get ass all the time. Like, that's, to me, like, that's gross. I think that... People people point out this double standard like how come a guy's a stud when he has lots of sex and a girl's a slut like dude if if your whole personality is that you have sex I think you're both lame I don't yeah. care if you're a guy or a girl like if that's your whole thing I don't think a guy's cool dude when a dude tells me about a sexual conquest it makes me uncomfortable like I don't want to hear dude I don't care unless you're like my closest of close friends and it it's something you need to get off your chest and talk about don't tell me about your sexual conquests like I'm yeah. not gonna pat you on the back for it uh, it's, I, I'm it's sorry. just I've, weird I've, I've known men sluts and when you listen to women talk about them they're usually like. I wouldn't fuck him. He po he's probably has all crudded up he, with all kinds of diseases and stuff like that. Like, he, do you know how many people he, do you know he fucked? What's her name? She's such a whore. And they they get that yeah. same stigma too. So I'm sorry, I don't buy that. Same exact stigma. If, if they get if they get a decent amount, then people are kind of like, oh yeah, you know, if there's a if they're a little loose, women, you know, guys will end up going like, oh yeah, she's pretty cool. But if you know, if once they go across that territory into sleeping with everybody, anything that moves, they both have that stigma. It's just that. Uh -huh. We only pay attention to the time that women get called sluts, or we use that as well, an insult. We don't really call men sluts, so <laughs> no, you know what they well they do though. They call oh, dude, man because they call guys fuck boys. If yeah, they're... fuck boys. No, they call it the fuck. That's what like the younger people do now. I'm telling you, Jim, and I'm telling you this because all right, here's why this is a difficult conversation to have as a man, and here's where I don't have privilege. Let me tell you, why I'm oppressed, Jim, because any girl she can be the just largest least conventionally attraction she could be the least conventionally attractive woman you've ever seen in your life but when she gets out on a stage and she puts herself up on that cross and says to her audience i am slut shamed for all of the men that i have relations with they're like oh that poor girl we're we're totally credulous in this situation that's happening to you um you can be a dude and you could be the most attractive funny, awesome guy in the world, which I am. And I'm the mom, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm totally kidding. But uh, <laughs> my, my profile pictures, my profile pictures are cartoon character. That means I'm ugly. Um, but hey, hey, hold on a, a second. <laughs> that, totally that is kidding. racist I'm totally against kidding. me. Okay. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. Do but I my have, point here is, I have a cartoon character right you now. You could be no, Channing I don't. Tatum. I have, I have, I have me as Bane wearing my Bane mask, which I love, by the way. Bane, yes. But he, see, here's my point with all this, and why I'm oppressed as a man. Oh. Um, because, uh, no, but but in all seriousness, you can be the most. You could have like Channing Tatum <sighs> with if he wasn't famous. Imagine Channing Tatum if he wasn't famous, most attractive dude. Girls love him, blah blah blah. If can we use Tom Hardy and he tried instead? To why do we have to use this guy? Tom Hardy. Jim, I'm going. To, <laughs> Jim, I'm going to get to the end of this sentence if it kills you. Of I course. swear. Of course. Anyway. Here's my point, Jim. You're invalidating my experiences by marginalizing me by man interrupting me, bane interrupting me. <laughs> bane interrupting. You can be the most attractive dude ever. You get up there and you talk about how you're judged for getting so many girls. People are gonna be like, dude, shut up. You're just trying to let us know you get girls. Like you're just trying to brag. And we don't believe you. There's no way you're getting with that many girls. Like whenever a guy talks about like getting with a lot of girls, there's all sorts of skepticism because obviously there are social reasons for which a man would lie about that. Like it's to your advantage in certain circumstances. But what they neglect to realize is that within feminist circles, there are reasons to lie about being a woman who has a lot of sexual conquests because that makes you empowered. And we're seeing the rise of this very bizarre but new double standard where men who have sex with a lot of women are seen as chauvinist pigs who objectify women and women who have sex with a lot of men are seen as brave, virtuous, empowered beings. Yeah, because I, I don't ever remember hearing on the news that you know Tom Likas is the greatest guy in the universe. I think last time I checked, they always bash him. Every time he comes on, they're always like, oh, you, why do you hate women? They, uh, that's like the question they always yeah. ask him every time he, that he's bringing on. And, and, of course, he, he responds in like kind of a funny, uh, jokingly. Uh, that, he's like, I don't hate women. I think every man should own one. But, yeah. Oh, wow. But he Jim, does that. He, do, he does that. He says that he does that just because it's a stupid question, so he gives a stupid answer. <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah. point. I mean, I... It's like once you've been asked something that ridiculous ad nauseum, you're going to start to say things to offend them. Because it's like, what do you really want me to say, dude? Mm -hmm. Like, you want me to say something sexist right now. I know. 
I know you do. Um, and it, it, it's like, it's so bizarre though, because, um, with all the slut shaming stuff, like again, as I mentioned earlier, I go to school with. Um, By the a way, lot I, of girls. I will, I will I'm, say, I'm, I will say that I don't hate women. There's nothing more I'd rather have sex with. Go ahead. Wow, Jim, that's totally <laughs> so, chauvinistic of but, you. But you, you predicted I was going to say something sexist, right? I knew you <laughs> yeah. were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. Okay. My point here. <laughs> that's a Tom. All right, so I'm just, I, I'm yeah. trying to finish my story. I'm not trying. All right, to Jim. Anyway, go I, ahead. Again. I go to an art school. At this at this point in time, at this point in time, I am committed to one woman. I'm not going to say who because my millions of female fans will attack her, Jim. You have to understand. Um, but in all seriousness, back when I was single, and again, it's just a very high female population here, I would just be hanging out with a girl just as friends because everyone here is a girl. Like I don't know how much more I can stress that. And... People will give you people will give you shit for it. like yeah, I'll come here with different girls like dude they're my friends like what are you talking like everyone here is a girl you're you're a total fuck boy why are you messing around with these so Jim I get I think it's time to the point of my I'm gonna, story I'm gonna debunk you right now I just pulled up your Facebook it says in your in your relationship status that you're single boom shots fired go ahead what. I don't have a relationship. I lied about having a girlfriend, uh, so you yeah. think I'm cool, Jim. Girls don't talk to me. Girls don't talk to me. I wanted to be the first libertarian. I wanted to be the first libertarian to have a girlfriend, Jim. I made the whole thing up. I'll, but be honest, it takes a big man to admit he's wrong, Jim. Yeah. You got to respect that. It takes a big man to admit he was wrong. No, I've seen your girlfriend. You have to. <laughs> Not. Yeah. We, we, uh, we, we but, don't we um, don't want to out her for sure. So, but anyways, no. Yeah, she, we got to start wrapping this up because I have to start getting ready for work. So, do you want to plug anything? What time do you go to work? Um, I, I'll tell you what I want to plug. I want to plug my nose because you stink, dude. Oh, shots fired! Wow. Again. Oh, those shit. are fighting words. How did I know I was gonna go somewhere like that, Jim? Um, <laughs> the, anyway. uh, I hate you so much. That was disgusting. <laughs> Them's jokes. He knows I'm joking. Anyways, go ahead. Uh, what do I want to plug? Well, go to Freedom Tunes. Unless you... <laughs> um, obviously, go to lolberts.com, vandalize Jim's wall for saying disgusting, disgusting things. Um, <laughs> I would also like to endorse uh, today's episode of the Lolberts was brought to you by Pepsi Cola, America's favorite soft drink since 1965. Go to lolberts.com slash Pepsi promo and type in our special code quench and you yourself can get a coupon for one free can of Pepsi Cola, the original pure food drink at your local vendor. If you want to drink a drink, drink Pepsi because it's a drink. Yeah. That's my plug. That was that was seamless too. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. By the way, your uh, freedomtunes.com does not work. What happened? I know it doesn't work. Uh, well, Randall, who was in charge of the Freedom Tunes website. Ooh, don't ever put bailed. anyone out. Anyone in charge of your things <laughs> ever. Go ahead. Well, he he ran off to Vegas with all of my money. And, no, I'm kidding. He's he he just I can find him. got out of I'll he's find just him super busy. Yeah, go ahead. No, <laughs> no, I'm still in contact. We're me no, we're we're still on like good footing. I, I'm not mad at him, but he shut down his server. He's doing different things, so he couldn't host my site anymore. And a fan of the show who I had a pretty good conversation with, really nice guy, he's currently building a new website. So, oh, cool. Yeah, very nice of him. Yeah, so we'll have a website up again. Right now, I just say go to libertarianrepublic.com because you can find some of my writing and all my videos are linked to there. So just go to libertarianrepublic.com, fam. Like, dog, it's totally it's solid, fam. Yo, yo, dog. Go to libertarianrepublic.com, fam. And just check that out, baby. Yeah. Um, oh, and, and, and buy a Bip Strong. Buy a Bip other... Strong. Buy Bip Strongs. Don't buy a Bip Strong. Don't put more money in Jim's pockets. He's already a billionaire who's <laughs> exploiting his workers. He made his fortune working at the donut shop, making. He invented the donut. Yeah. Oh, oh. And... We also have we also have three more co-hosts that are coming up. We got three new uh, co-hosts in the Lulberts. Uh We had MK because Jim on. Didn't his... think I was good enough. Yeah. We're all busy, so. It's hard finding people to do two <laughs> shows for. When, 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 Jim, my... let me be clear with you. Maybe this is something I should say off air. Maybe this is something I should say off air. But I, don't, I have no prudence, Jim, so I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> I would, if we could like get like a scheduled fixed time, 
I would be happy to do this way more often than I'm currently doing it. Okay. Like, I'd be happy to do this podcast way more often. And Pat, who does Freedom Tombs with me, he does the lip syncing uh, when I don't have time to finish a video. And also sometimes he'll, like, help me write episodes. Like, sometimes we do just full-out collab and we'll write one together. Mm. But he likes the idea of a podcast, too. So I could be available a lot more often, and he could be available, too. It's just a matter of, like, if we can schedule an official time. You know what yeah. I mean? You see what I'm saying, dog? Mm -hmm. Listen, fam. This dog. This is real important. And it also depends, homie, on like, f fam. We gotta figure like what's dog. We'll talk okay, off okay. air. Well, yeah, I'm we'll, not... we'll we'll do this in the in the secret Lolbert's hangout group. That yeah. But anyways, uh, we should probably say who the three are. Uh, M. K. Lords was was a co-host, was a guest co-host, but she's gonna be an official co-host. And yeah, we should probably have like a day where we do a set day for everything. So we have MK Lords. Uh, another one you've heard of is Jim Bab. He he decided to come on board too, uh, which he's hilarious. And we have a, a one that you've never heard of called uh, Brandon Von Storm Th something. I have to pull it up. I'm, I'm an asshole. I've, like, never, heard of him. Wrong I've never heard of him. He's probably a cool guy, Jim, but you just butchered uh, his name. Stormhaven. So. There we go. So Brandon Von Stormhaven. He's going to be the other one. So. Hopefully we can we can say like okay every you know we can have MK you know every second Tuesday at, at seven o'clock in the morning we'll record and then you can have like every week or whatever or we'll work something out where everybody's doing something but the only the only person that couldn't do something like that would be to sauce but because he's always busy he's always doing something because he, what he's you know he's learning programming and he's also being a waiter because you know he's a starving uh, wannabe actor in, in New York ha. So you have to work eight I'm jobs. a starving wannabe animator in Georgia, so... Yeah. Well, oh, my. I'm actually stiff on <laughs> all of you. I'm kidding. Dude, are you kidding? You know me? I got job offers. Let me tell No, but let me just make something really clear to the audience. If you're going to disparage and marginalize me for being at art school, the only reason I went to art school is because I went to community college for two years and started a small business in animation production, and baby, I was getting job offers and gigs. But I said, I want the college experience. Don't go to art school unless... You've attempted to make money doing it in high school and have been successful. There's no other reason to go to art school. Like, d d if, if you're like, I want to go into animation, but you never animated before, you went to college, like, dog, free, like, get on top of it. You need to be ahead of the game. I mean that. People think, people are like, he's at art school, he's a dreamer. No, I've only, I, I've tried this before and I've been relatively successful, so that's why I thought the college education was a decent investment. Don't go to school for this if if you're not all in and if you haven't dedicated yourself to it in the past. What are you thinking? Yep. Art school? You idiot. <laughs> I, don't, I don't ever keep going to art school. Yeah, that's a, that's a good reason why. If you've, you've been successful beforehand. But anyways, yeah, I should probably wrap it up because i got to get yeah. ready for work. So, uh, yeah, freedomtunes.com soon. Lawbirds.com, buy a bit strong. Uh, Libertarian Republic, what's the website? I hate that website. Libertarian Republic dot, Libertarian Republic dot com, Jim. And maybe if you want to be civil and have a legitimate discussion, instead of bashing me and my man Austin and Keith. Your man? You, yeah, we <laughs> homies, fam. You want to go one-on-one? -on -one? I will debate you. Austin's too busy to debate no, you. No, 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 no. I'll debate, I'll debate both of you right now, and you can't win. You're a fucking white male. Booyah, I'm out. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT no-gov license. The BIPCOT no-gov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, in this country, and in a bunch of the Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about Fiend Phone. FiendPhone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help.
That's fiendphone.com. F E E N P H O N E.com. Foxtrot Echo Echo November Phone.com. Fiendphone. I never knew remote audio could be this good.